Mark chapter 3, verse 13. He goes up into a mountain and calls unto him whom he would. And they came unto him. So this is a selected group of people. And he goes up the mountain and he's picking those that are physically fit. Because this ministry, they're going up and down mountains, going up and down hills. They're walking far and near. He ordained 12. That means put into the ministry. That they should be with him. That he might send them forth to preach. Not to invite the church. Not to, oh, look at a great preacher we have. I'm telling you, I'm getting sick in his lives of seeing church aid. I'm seeing all these flyers on Facebook. We're going to revival. We got these men. There's the guy's face. There's the church. There's the chicken. Today, I saw a church is going to have an Easter egg hunt. There's no Bible, no scripture, and no mention of Jesus Christ. There's your lives to see in church age, and you're not going to get a revival when you take what is holy and cast it to the paganism of goddesses. And I don't care what Facebook says. You can't link, you know, Ishtar to Esther and I, I, the, the Easter, yes, you can. I don't go by what scholars say. I go by what history says. By the way, some of the scholars that you can trust when it comes to the Bible is atheist, uh, what do you call it? I'm trying to think. Archaeologists. There's been many cases where an atheist has gone to study the Bible and try to prove the Bible wrong, and they come to be a believer. Now, they're not going to change the Bible and have power to heal sicknesses. Well, that's not the church age today. To cast out devils. The church says all are welcome. The church today welcomes devils. All right, Simon. He surnamed Peter, James, the son of Zebedee, John, the brother of James. He surnamed them Boanerges, which is the sons of thunder. Andrew, that's Peter's brother, Philip and Bartholomew, Matthew and Thomas. There's Downey Thomas. James, the son of Alphaeus. So there's two James. Thaddeus. Pay attention to that name. Simon the Canaanite. There's two Simons. And do you realize if Israel had been to the full commission of God through Moses and Joshua in the promised land, if they had done fully to what God told there would be no Canaanite. They were supposed to wipe them out. Judas Iscariot which also betrayed him, past tense, because Mark is writing afterwards, and they went into an house. I don't know what house. The multitude came, here comes all the people together, so that they could not so much as eat bread. There wasn't even room on the table to serve. When his friends heard of it, they went out to lay hold on him. They said, he's beside himself. So the friends of Jesus, the guy's a lunatic. Even his brothers think the same thing. So, Matthew 10. we got to break it here because there's a whole study in the next uh, verses. Matthew 10, 1. And when he had called unto him the twelve disciples, he gave them power against unclean spirits, so devils are spirits, unclean spirits, never demons, to cast them out, to heal all manner of sickness and all manner of disease. Now the name of the 12, 12 apostles are these. The first, Simon, who was called Peter, Andrew, his brother, James, the son of Zebedee, John, his brother, Philip, Bartholomew, Thomas, Donald, Thomas, Matthew the publican, look how Matthew puts his name in, in title. He didn't put Simon, Peter, James, and John the fisherman, but Matthew the publican. All right, Matthew. 
James, the son of Alphaeus, there's the other James. Lebes, Lebanese, whose surname was Thaddeus. Now, Mark says Thaddeus. Simon the Canaanite and Judas, who would betray him. These twelve Jesus sent for him, commanded them, say, Go not in the way of the Gentiles. So, a little thing with the names there, but, you know, pretty much Luke. Six, and there are people who say they're contradictions in the Bible. I'll show you some, but they're not contradictions. And it came to pass in those days that he went out into a mountain to pray. So, all right, he went to the mountain to pray, and continued all night to pray to God. So he's up there all night long, awake and praying. <clears throat> Six a.m. when it was day, he calls up the disciples. So Luke tells us he's been in the mountaintop all night. He's praying. Because he's going he's gonna to have a very important thing. He's going to ordain men into the ministry. That's no light thing. I've seen some men ordained in the churches today. And like, what are you doing? You don't know anything about the Bible. And of them he chose... 12, whom he also named apostles. Simon, who he named Peter. Okay, we got that. Andrew, his brother. Okay, we got that. James and John, son of Zebedee. Philip and Bartholomew, we got that. Matthew, the publican, and Thomas, the doubter. James, the son of Alphaeus, and Simon called the Otis. So well, that's the Canaanite. James, is Judas, the brother of James. And Judas Iscariot, which is also the traitor. We got a problem here. Luke 6.16 says there is a Judas. That's not in Mark, is not in Matthew. But all 11 names match. Except one. Thaddeus or Lebedee. And what he did was he just changed his name to Judas. Maybe after what Judas did. Listen, I don't have anything to do with that name. In the book of Acts, there's a man named Jesus. He changes his name. Oh, wait a minute. I ain't nothing like that, Jesus. And notice you got another James, uh, the brother of James. James is your Greek Jacob. They're one and the same. And he came down because they were in the mountain. And he goes far up into the minister. Those are the 12 apostles, 12 disciples. And many of your Christians today will know the whole defense line of the football team, who plays in the basketball team, Who's in the outfield of the baseball team, but they don't know the 12 disciples. They don't know the 12 children or sons of Jacob. But they can tell you everybody who won Oscars and Tonys and who's ever in the movie. It's where your priority is. I would say be well versed, know these names and all that, so you can't be fine. And, and you know, you get to know the names and you know them by and just just pull your pastor off and say, Hey Pastor, name the twelve disciples. Ask the scholar. You'll be remarked to know what the answer will be. I've done that. Could I name them all today? I don't know. It take me a little time. Every once in a while, I try to, and I get messed up. Did I already say that one? Did I already name that one? The one's missing. I can't think of the one missing. But they're in there for a reason. Now you don't hear nothing of Barbarian. It doesn't mean he's nobody. Phil, 
he's mentioned a couple times. He's got a, he's got daughters who are. Um, I forget what the Bible said that they are, but they're in the ministry. Thomas, we know him as a, as a doubting type. Simon, the Zerodes. Okay, don't no, really. So if you were to take these 12 men, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, and you were to paint a picture of these 12 men with Jesus, you would have them to be European white men after your movie stars and after your Italians. Simon and Andrew, James and John were not Europeans. They were Jewish. Judas Iscariot is a half-breed Jew of Edom. Simon Zerodes is a colored man of Canaan. Now, I've seen the pictures of the disciples. I've seen, you know, the, the Italians, the, the American, European. I've even seen them, the African colored black. Those are not correct. So you got these 12 men. Four of them are fishermen. And I'm not going to go into, oh, you know, uh, scholarship says, you know, this guy. and scholar. I'm not going to go with scholarship. I'm going to go with what the Bible says. You got 12 men in Jesus. John tells us there is so much more that is not written in the Gospels. You got four fishermen. And I'm telling you, I've worked with fishermen. I've worked with lobstermen. They're a fierce group of people. I guarantee when Peter got back in the ship, <laughs> Peter, what happened to you? You sunk. <laughs> well, who do you think you are? None of you got out of the boat. I've seen the lobster men fight. And I'm worse, I've seen them intoxicated fight. Philip, we know he's a doubter. Amen. And Jesus shows up and they have fellowship with him. And, you know, Philip wasn't there. I mean, excuse me, Thomas. Hey, Thomas, you won't believe what you missed. Because this is what your Baptist would do. Oh, man, you missed Jesus. You didn't see Jesus. And Thomas was like, well, you know what? If I don't see it myself and I don't touch the prince of the name, I don't believe it. You got a colored man there. He's a Gentile. Now, what would you think Peter would have thought of that Gentile? He wouldn't even go to the Italian house. And they're constantly arguing each other. They want, who's the greater? Twelve men, and who's the greater? What about the man that's leading you, Jesus Christ? <laughs> Forget about that. And then they're walking and talking and living touching, seeing, smelling, dining with Jesus. And there's only one of them at the cross of Jesus when he died. James. Peter's gone off in bitter weeping. Where's the rest of them? Judas goes and hangs himself. Well, which Judas? We got two of them now. You're talking about you want to have some fun at church, you know. You know, Judas did this, and, well, and you look and say, "Well, what's Judas? What do you mean, what Judas? Judas is scary. Well, there was another Judas. No, there wasn't. Matthew, Mark, I'm going to Luke. There's another Judas, Sidious. And then when it comes to the three days and three nights that he said I would rise from the tomb. Where are the 11 of them? We know, outside of Jews is scared, we know the 11 was in the upper room. They said they, that they said the 11 gathered together. They were in great sorrow. But they weren't there to greet Jesus. How are you doing? How are you doing? Glory to God. And it, it's 
quite funny. And I don't mean ha-ha, because the church is the same way, too. Where is the church? And... I know one player, Ellie and I had it. I said it's in there. Let's see. So the two men walking to Emmaus in Luke twenty four eighteen says, whose name was Cleopas. I don't know if it gets the other name. So there were many more than the twelve. In John 6, 66, it says there was a church split of Jesus. Many did not walk any further with him. And he turns to the twelve. Are you guys going to go too? One point he says, I think he said he had 400, I think it is. And these churches today, they strike, bring people in, bring people in, bring them in. Well, you know, that's not how the Bible works. And they want the acts, you know, and 4,000 were gathered to the church and 5,000. Okay, those days are over with. And you may rank on me because I keep saying the thing, but you're not going to get that revival if you're in goddesses and gods of the pagans, of the Babylonians, of the Romans, of the Greeks. You're not going to get those revivals. When you advertise revival and you take the word Bible, you take scripture and you take the name of Jesus off it, but you plaster your face there. And our guest speaker, Dr. So-and-so, and, and Ph.D. so-and-so, that's and that. And that's what we're allowed to see in church. You, say, you think you're rich. You think you're great. Oh, look, look at all these great revivals. Look at all these great meetings. Look at me. People came to our, our revival meeting and all that. And you're going to be at the judgment seat of Christ. You're going to be, it's going to be an utter failure. And men like George Mueller... This is going to be up there just shaking his head. Yeah, really? If that's what you're bragging about? You want me to call my, my, my children that I had in my orphanage? It'd be a sad thing for... Um, can't think of his name now. I doubt it. William Boo. We at the judgment seat of Christ. And then face the people of the Salvation Army at the Great White Zone. This time there's this, what did you guys do? Just shaking his head. I don't believe what this, what this is going to. What, what's this red basket thing? Why are you guys standing outside a grocery store and you're not singing him? And we've even heard people, you know, they're in the, and they're playing the rap music or whatever kind of music. It's not what. The Moody, the great revelation of the word of God through him and and the crap that the Moody Bible is was putting out. Imagine Bob Jones Sr. looking at the failure of his sons. Dr. P. S. Ruckman looking at what his church has gone into great error. You know, people say, well, I'm not going to church because there's a lot of hypocrites there. And you know, you really got, you honestly really got to say, yes, they're right. But the main thing is we don't go to church. Those that are saved are the church. 
And when, when you're sitting down in a gazebo having a plain and simple Bible study, a plain and simple 1828 dictionary words, and the Word of God is working and the Holy Spirit is working, and you attend the church where you can bring any Bible you want, and the preacher doesn't even bring a Bible. And he gets upset when you're trying to bring his congregation to a King James Bible. You're not going to get that revival. So he's going to pack up and he's going to go. He's going to run away from his problems. Because someone entered his church with the truth. And as he left that church, he's left, he's left a lot of head bagging. And God's not to offer confusion. And when you're sitting there and you got a church and, you know, it's the Greek and Hebrew and it's these, these educated words of scholarly Bible institute or college. And they go right up over the head of the congregation. Okay. What are your fruits? And the question comes down to, before we look at the disciples, your church, do the people in the surrounding area where you live, city, town, county, state, do they know about your church? Does the congregation go out there and say, you know, our church, we're having spaghetti supper, we're having revival, we have Sunday school, we, I mean, did they go? And then we have the ladies club and all, whatever your church, do you ever go out and tell? I mean, it's coming up on, we're going to have Easter, we're going to eat, we're going to have resurrection on Easter. That's two words that don't go together, my friend. And then, okay, we're going to have, you know, this great thing, Easter and all that, and we're going to have an Easter egg hunt. Don't come to me and complain about the egg prices. If you're going to waste eggs, well, we got plastic eggs. All right, then don't turn around and talk about China when you're using Chinese eggs. You cannot find Easter eggs from Genesis to Revelation anywhere in church history, but when the church marries into the Roman Catholic Church. Can you just see, when you look at the lives of these 12 men we're looking at tonight, can you just see the Apostle Paul going out there at midnight instead of being in prayer? Can you see Jesus going up on a mountain and instead of prayer in the middle of the night, he's out there hiding Easter eggs? I doubt it. I would not think so. But the churches are involved in that today. Would you, could you see these men in a satanic, and you cannot, you cannot deny the fact is that Halloween is the birthday of Satan. It's celebrated. I mean, the, 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 the wick, the uh, uh, Anton of Age. Anton of Age, who wrote the satanic Bible and the satanic church and that, is well pleased that Christian parents allow their kids to go out on his birthday of Satan and celebrate Satan's birthday. He enjoys that. I ought to tell you something. Oh, but you know, but we give it the name Trunk or Tree. You see, you got Simon Peter and Jesus gave him another name and you got the apostles and some of them have got other names. See? Now, you see where a Christian gets it. Oh, you see, you know, this is where we get it from. Uh, those were men. They were not holidays. So what you're doing is to promote your sin. You are changing, like they said today. They are, they are misleading, misaligned. That even Facebook and their fast checkers, <laughs> the Catholic Church, their fast checker, that... Esther is not in relation to Easter. Yes, it is. 
But I've heard a couple pastors in my lifetime, we're going to do it. I don't care. We're going to do it. I had an independent Baptist. I had a Southern Baptist. And I got a Baptist. We're going to do it anyway. And then we're going to have revivals. No, you're not. Can you see these 12 men with Jesus? What would Jesus do? Can you see them walking into your life to see in church aids to that? You wouldn't. Because a lot of the scene in church age, Revelation chapter 3 says, Jesus is not even in the church. And if Jesus is not going in the church, Peter's not going in the church. James is not going in the church. Now you go from the calling of Matthew 10, Mark 3, and Luke 6. To the end of these men's lives. And they all died except for John. Violent deaths. You show me. Including history. Including Joe, Joe Fevis and all that. Including your, your scholarship. Show me where these men. Partake. Of what's going on in today's lives. To see in church age. You wouldn't. And these men, their lives and the lives of Jesus has been changed. Rewritten. Omitted. Despises, you know, it's nothing important. It's just a story. You know, Jonah. I've heard of a pulpit of a well-known preacher's church. I've heard one of the students out of the pulpit preach that Jonah did not die in the whale's belly. And I've heard many preachers. I'm sorry, you got your scripture wrong. And you're not going to go anywhere with God when you got the scripture wrong. Because that moment, when you doubt or change the word of God... Look at what Eve, the first Bible corrector. These men are going to set out on a rough and tumble life with Jesus. Three and a half years. John again says what is what has mostly been written has not been written. Listen, if Peter pulled the sword out and cut a man's ear off. For, for the sake of Jesus. Can you see Peter other times getting into that kind of art? Can you see how many times Jesus... All right, you two. All right, guys, knock it off. Will you leave Matthew alone? And you got to wonder when when the Pharisees that came to you, is it okay to pay taxes? If not, all eyes went to Matthew. <laughs> and he's over there with... <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> Can you see Peter? Go take up a hook and fish. The first few fish you catch, there'll be a coin in there. Pay the tax. He just think Peter, he's going to go down. Oh, man, I know how to do this. And it was nothing like his fishing. Because after the death and burial and resurrection, Jesus goes, I mean, uh, Peter goes out fishing and he catches nothing. Now, Bartholomew, you'll see him in the book of Acts. He's out there witnessing. Philip and his daughters are out there witnessing. He settles in his house. These men do not have a building called a church. Paul, on his journey, is he's waiting for somebody. He's looking around Athens. He says, oh, this is a good place to meet. Where? Right here at the, of, the, of the statue to the unknown God. <laughs> and there are people probably going there, worshiping, doing whatever they do. And Paul says, excuse me, guys. Let me preach. Let me preach. 
And then people here and, and other street preachers, what are you doing preaching? What are you doing yelling, screaming? What, how, what, that's not, you turn people away. That's, that's exactly what the Bible says. Because that's what each of these men did, including Judas Iscariot, went out in the streets and preached. The only thing I can't do is call out devils and, and uh, cure diseases. Now, I could put medicine and a Band-Aid and put a wrapper on. I could maybe put my hands on you and say, in the name of Jesus Christ, leave them. But that's not my power. And I'm not going to boast in those things. And you got these churches. Now let's look at these 12 men again. We, we've already read all Matthew. These 12 men, what's their attitude? And what would be the attitude that we're going to have this mega church and all these thousands of people? All right, what's the attitude when you got a throng of people, they're elbowing, kicking, and knocking over, poking you in the face, and, and they're all hungry, they're all upset. What was the attitude of these men? Oh, Jesus, send them away. Make them sit down, but we rose, and we'll feed them. You got to be kidding me, Jesus! You really got to be killing, kidding me. How many times did the disciples in the story come along? Just send them away? No, no. These men are human beings. They are called by God. They are dedicated by God. And notice another one thing about these men. They don't have scholarship and they have not been to Bible school. And they don't walk around with PhDs and doctors. I got my doctorate for only one reason. My pastor in my church told me, he said, if you're going to go into a ministry, if you're going to start a church, if you think that they're going to say, what, where's your diploma? I got my first diploma. He says, and that's not good enough. He looked at all my courses, everything I had in my class, all the, all the years. And he says, you got to do them all. I said, okay. I'm a doctor of, of theology. But friend, there are people out there in the active work of the ministry today, and they... They haven't been to one school. And it's amazing to me that this day and age, these churches, they all got these schools, they all got these schools, they all got these classes, we got all these diplomas, we're doing great. And have you ever been to Volusia County, Florida? Maybe you come down here for Spring Fest, maybe you come down here Daytona 500, Bike Week, Jeep Week, Pickup Week, you know, come down to the beach. The world's famous beach, which I never knew it was, but that's what they say. You know, you Daytona Beach, Florida. You come down here, and you've been in Volusia County. True, reliable King James Bible-believing churches. Now, there's two of them. One of them is, shoot, you can get baptized three or four times if you want, openly. Well, Pastor, you know, you baptized me last month. Well, we'll baptize you again, openly. All right, you're out the window. You can go to another Baptist church. You get three quarters of an hour of, an hour of, of music and, and mind bloating your ears across the, the, the lawn and just you, you walk out of there cleaning your ears. What, what you think? I can't hear you. And then 15 minutes of a preacher who can't talk, can't preach, whose son is in charge of the the music program is as unworldly, ungodly music as it can be. All right, we'll rule that one out. You got a King James Bible believing church, and you know, Jesus said, verily, verily, you know, truly, truly. And we're not going to get a mansion, we're going to get something else. Okay, we'll throw that one out the window. And we, we can go to another King James Bible believing church, and everybody in the Old Testament are Christian. And there's only one gospel. All right, we can throw that one out the window. Now, I'm not saying that, you know, I'm not going to saying that, you know, all hypocrites in the church. I'm just looking at these churches who teach heresies. We can go to another church and say, all right, you don't like my wife and, and the women setting up the VBS? Don't come back. Honestly.
I mean, I'm serious. There is no doctrine in these King James Bible believing churches today. It used to be if a church had a woman preacher, look out. If a church advertises Easter eggs and sunrise service, which is flat out rejected by Jeremiah, look at these 12 men. Look now the rest of their lives. They would not put up, never mind Jesus, they would not put up with the nonsense. That's going on in today's church. 